Today we'll be talking about how to build a 3D character controller right inside Godot engine using Visual Script. We're not going to be using real code, so we're going to be building a codeless game. So it's going to be in 3D. So we have an empty scene here, so I'm going to click on 3D scene. So it's going to have a special here. So first of all, I want to quickly build up something here. So I'm going to click and uh, create a new this thing. I'm going to call it a uh, texture and um, we might need that would be a texture there so we're going to need also um, scene folder I'm right clicking and selecting that so um, first let's add a static body so the static body is more like a, a node that enables you to be able to actually bring in uh, a body it, that can be able to collide with other bodies so if you use some other ones it will not be able to sense objects or bodies like kinematic bodies so we we'll have this 3d here so i'm going to select that create the static body so it's going to ask me for a collision but before i actually add that i like to add my mesh instance i'm going to right click on it and add child um, node there and that will be my mesh instance so my mesh instance is more like a way of being able to create um, like a physical body if you look at here the same body is doesn't really have a physical body here so but if i click here in my inspector once i select this select my inspector and click on mesh i can be able to create a, a plane mesh or a cube so i'll go for a plane because i'm, I'm trying to build the floor for the meantime so it will give me a floor here so i can use my controls here so maybe another um, tutorial will start with the basics of uh, godot and the basic controls and the entire thing so i just want to do a quick uh, review of our visual scripting uh, here so if you look at here it still has this uh, option here or this uh, alert telling us that it needs a collision body so that um, when you put a kinematic body on it or some other kind of rigid body it doesn't pass through it can be able to sense it so static bodies are like more like physics bodies so i'm going to right click on it and click on add child node i'm going to add a collision shape so my collision shape uh, i would like to make it um, if you look at here when i select it it's asking me for a shape for the collision so i'm going to i would like to use um, a box so for you to be able to do that, you have to use these controls here to surround it. So it's more like whenever uh, an object comes across this particular uh, shape, it will not be able to pass through wherever the collision is. So the collision is like what tells the 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 mesh what the things where it can actually allow things to pass through. So once, if I didn't put it here, anything that passes through here, any rigid body will fall through this place. So I'll just want to make sure it covers the entire part of it, okay? So there will be better ways of doing this, but let's just work with this for the meantime. So we'll have this, so we'll have a collision body here. So right now, I'm going to call this my floor. So I can snap this and you have a floor. So one more thing I want to do so that I can be able to appreciate what I'm actually doing here is um, I would like to add some materials to it. So if you don't know what materials are about, um, you can be able to actually open that, click on mesh and we have a material here and click on that and new special material. So when you open that, you can click on that and you have a video. So in the albedo, you can specify the color you want it to be, right? So, but we want it to actually have a real texture so that we will know when our our shape is actually, uh, our character is actually moving. So we quickly build all these things. I'm doing it so that if you don't have the knowledge of how to build characters, you can easily work with that. So, um, or building environments in good dots. So I'm just going to go down. I want to get a texture, so I will quickly go to where I have my texture and how you import textures just go to where you have it so I want to use that one there and I'm just going to drag it and drop it inside here so and that's quickly how you can be able to import um, uh, the texture 
So with this in my albedo, I will just select that and drag it right inside here. And I have my this thing here. So I want to save this automatically. So right now it's not saved, so I'm going to press Ctrl S. And I have my scenes here. I'm going to double click on the scene. I'm going to call this my 3D character controller. So I'm going to save that so you can actually uh, make this a bit bigger, uh, you can tile it more. So if you want to tile it, uh, if you want to do more of uh, materials, we can go in details with that. So in this UV1, you can just go for let's say 5 and 5. So you can be able to actually have more uh, details here. So we can do more things but we're going to leave that for now. So I'm going to right click on the spatial, I'm going to add um, kinematic body all right so um i want to build all these things inside here i can build outside but i want to build everything inside here so after that i want to add a mesh instance so the mesh instance is there but you're not seeing anything yet so i'm going to go to the mesh and i want to use um, a capsule this time around so look at this this is a capsule so I'm going to get my capsule and I will bring it up. So see what I actually want to do. I want to use it to actually build a, a very simple uh, character. So I'm going to select that and duplicate. Bring this down. When I bring it down, I can use my rotation and rotate this character like that. Okay. So we want to be able to just build a very simple character here. So have um, this color going up to this place. So let's scale it down. Use your scale here and scale this character down like that. And I would like to do under Control D to duplicate it again and drag it down a bit like that. So I would like to scale it out like that. So currently we'll have um, just a very simple character that can be able to move. Once you actually select this, you should be able to move all of them all at once. Okay. So right now we want to be able to make sure that everything is working as we want. So I'm going to just drag it down, make sure it's actually touching the floor there. Okay. So let's select this. So right now we need to add uh, a collision shape so that when you collide with something it will stop okay so i'm going to right click on this and add a collision shape to it and i think i will want to use uh, in my inspector here i'm going to click on that new box shape and i'm going to bring this up now mind you it's also increasing the other uh, under it so you have to Make sure you are doing it proportionally. So I'm going to drag this up by clicking on this uh, my move tool here. So you can just drag it up to cover. So I have something like this. I'm going to bring it down bits, take it down. So I'm going to check all around it and see how it is going. Okay, so we'll have this here. All right, so I'm going to select this and call this a player. So I could actually make this player to be different, but for now I don't want it to be different. You could actually do more on it. So right now we want to just be able to when we use our um, arrow keys or WASD, we want to be able to actually move this character. So but I want us to start with um, the mo the movements that's using the arrow keys. So I'm gonna save that. So right now we can right click and add a script. So let's go into the coding part now. So adding the script, we'll have our player. So this is the, let me call this a 3D player. Um, I would like to put underscore, underscore player, underscore movements. All right, so now, where is it saved? So I'm going to click here and it, it's saving the scene. I don't want you to do that. I want you to create its own scene. So I'm going to click on that, go back here and create.
create a new folder call that my script so it's very good that you actually have different folders for different things so you have the name of the folder there so click on that and uh, click on create make sure you have this visual scripted not that or gd script these are for real codes so i'm going to go for visual coding visual scripting so it's true that view scripting might limit you in so many ways but for those that do not really want to go into uh, coding um, they can actually use view script to do a lot of things so you can easily switch from 2d 3d okay and then go back to the script so this is what we have here all right so let's go back to our script so the first thing you want to do let's start with the process okay process function so the process function enables us once we actually call during the process step of or the main loop so once the game starts this whatever is there you can actually use a physics process for more physics bodies but the process here will actually work very well so i'll click on open on that and i'll get my process okay so if you are confused click here you can type process if you don't see it there and just click on that and click on open and you have your process here so the thing we want to do right now is i want this to move okay so for it to be able to move we need um, some uh, nodes, okay, that we'll actually be using here within this particular place in the programming uh, blocks. So I'm going to right click inside here and I'll type action. So action is um, a way of being able to bring in some things like buttons pressed. So when you press a button, it should do a particular thing, okay. So I will say, um, I can say um, when you press up, this is up, okay. Um, I'm going to make another tutorial where we'll do uh, the details. These are the default buttons you're going to see, but you can create your own buttons, but that will make our tutorial a bit longer. So I'm just going to create up there. Up will actually make it to actually move forward, okay? So if you look at here now, I want up to make it move this way, um, down to make it backwards, then right this way, and left that way. Or oh, that's left arrow key that way. So I'm going to go back to my script, and right now, I want to bring in another um, thing here. So we are in this play, and this play is a kinematic body, all right? So if I right click again, I can type move and collide. So the move and collide is enables moves the body along the vector, um, real vector here, then the, the body will stop if it collides. So whenever you actually use this, it can be able to move an object or uh, in kinematic body. You see it's under the kinematic body. You can move it and it will stop whenever it collides the particular body. So I'm going to open that. So this the, the function or sorry the, the node you're actually going to use to make this work. Okay. So if I select that, I can be able to if I can do this, I will have to select this. And I will tell my program, um, don't just run this because if I do this, that means that once the game starts, it starts moving automatically. All right. So um, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to click, drag it out, and once I drop it, I say click, drag it out, drop. Once you drop, you see condition there. If you don't have, you can type it there. And when you open it, now you're giving a condition telling it whenever. Um, what should happen before you should run this code all right so i'm going to tell it whenever uh, you press it, this action here you should do this so the action we have selected is the up okay so it should do something so what should it do it should move now the next thing i want us to understand now are the axes here so if you look at here you have the x axis y and z axis so let's go back to 3d and you see the axis so if you look at up here you see your y your z and the x so the x is actually the, uh, the red one the z is the blue one so this is the z so but right now we want to go on the x axis so that means uh, positive x forward okay so let's try that out and see so i'm going to go to script and say uh, we want you to move uh, about one um i don't think uh, i know the, the actual measurement here but just say one unit okay forward and i'll press enter so i can now it's going to whenever i press the up it will check what i is pressed and it's going to move it along on this um, axis here 
So I'm gonna right click and click on play this. Sorry, uh, before we do that, I need to put up something more. So I'm going to right click on this and add a camera. So because without a camera, you cannot be able to actually see the player. So I'm gonna add a camera to this scene and uh, I'm adding to the player so when it's moving, it moves along with the player. So if you come in here, you can actually see the camera here. So, so I'm gonna bring in the camera. The camera is facing here. So look at where it's facing right now. So if you do this, you see it's facing the other side. So I'm gonna use the rotation and rotate it to face my character, okay? So to position it properly, I like using my view and two viewports. And I'll make this one to be viewing the character. Or I'll use this one to set it properly. So I can select this and set it, okay? So I have something like this. So we can actually make the player smaller if you want to, but we don't need that. I would prefer to make my scene a bit bigger. So I'm going to go back to my one view and remove this preview here. So select the floor and uh, I'm going to scale it up a bit, a bit here. So use that and drag it up to that place. Okay, so we'll have this. So the next thing I want to do is uh, let's test this game and see if it's actually working with the up button. So once you right click and play it, you see, so if I press up, it's actually going forward. Can you see that? Okay, so right now this uh, thing is working on its own. So I'm going to make it a child of this particular one. So it becomes a child, meaning that I just dragged it inside it. If you look at here, click and drag it inside here it becomes a child of the player so that means that if i right click and play again play this scene when i move the camera moves with it so you can see that okay so this is a basic 3d movement i'm going to add more things to it to make it more interesting so um let's go back to our code so let's add more um subscale things here so right now i want to now add the other buttons so for the next button i want to control d select that control d i'm going to drag this down the next button is the down button so i'm going to do it for the down so i'm going to tell it um now this is true now we're going to work with this for the meantime we're going to use when we start the animation part so i'm going to go to when it's done want another condition so if it checks this if it checks that another button is pressed. So if this button is pressed, it should do something else. So we want you to move on and add this. So I'm going to click on that. In case you don't understand this, you can just right click, move and collide. Okay. And just don't use move and slide, just move, use move and collide. So we'll just get that and put that there. So this time I'm going to do negative one on the X axis. Remember the axis, okay, negative one. So it's going to be going backwards. So let's test it out and be sure that we are on the right path. So go forward, backwards, forward, backwards. So if it's too fast, you can actually change it to um, about, uh, I think it's a bit fast. So let me just change it to about 0 0.5 and uh, this one minus 0 0.5. Okay, so now I want to add the other ones here. So I'm going to quickly uh, duplicate this one too. And remember we'll have this, let me arrange this properly so that you appreciate what is happening here. I'm just going to drop this here. And this one there. And it will be very organized. So I'm going to go for done again. So when it's done, it should check for another one. So this one will be, uh, I'm going to go for let me go for left. This is UI left. So I'm going to drag this here and go for um, this. Duplicate this again. Ctrl D to duplicate. And I'm going to add this here and select that. So this time I'm going to press zero. Now, if I go back to this, so um, if you look at our axis, let me select my player and see my axis. 
so the z axis is the yellow one so positive z that's this way all right should be uh, right and negative z is left so i'm going to go back to my script so because i'm using my left button so it's, it's going to be negative z so i'm going to put here minus 0 0.5 so it's on the z axis okay so quickly i'll do the other one bring in my condition again and um, I'm going to select this Ctrl D and just drag this inside here. So I'm going to select this one Ctrl D2. So it's just the same process. I'm repeating it again and again. So put this here. But this time around, this one will be 0 0.5. Enter. So you must do this. If not, it might not really be able to, you know. Come in so you type it in and press the key so select this one and this will be my right okay so let's go and check it out so this when you press right so I'll right click on it and play this scene so if I use my arrow keys now I can go forward backwards left right forward backwards left right so that's how we create our our basic character movements within our 3d now we have not done the idea of rotation, we will not do it for now, we just want to go with the basic uh, character motion. So right now I want to be able to transform this my 3D scene to make it more interesting. So one of the fast ways I like working is, um, let me just call this, I'm going to right click and create another um, static body. So this one will actually be the wall, okay, static body and um, right click and create a mesh. So my mesh instance will be, um, I'm going to use a cube this time around. So new cube mesh, okay. So I'm going to select that cube mesh and uh, scale it up like that. So I'm going to have something like this, scale it up. I'm using my scale tool here. Let me drag this up a bit like that, okay. So we'll have something like this so we can quickly um, put this around our scene here so I'm going to select that drag it up a bit so that's hot okay so um, I want to import another um, material or texture so I'll quickly get this texture here and let me select this and make sure i'm selecting i was just select it drag it inside this texture here so now i want to add a texture to it i'm coming with a collision so i will select when i select this mesh i can just come in here and click on materials it's empty right now so click here uh, special okay special material i'll click on this and go to albedo so for this, I'm going to just drag this, um, that should be brick, and just drag my brick uh, inside here. So if you look at that, let's see, it's coming, alright, so we'll have this here now. So it's not looking so cool, so we can be able to actually go for UV, and we can go for about, so let me go for 9, 9. Okay, I think uh, let's take this down so to three, so it's going to be a bit better. So we'll have something like this. So I can easily um, increase this a bit to so make it much more interesting. All right, so we'll have something like this. So let's quickly add um, a collision shape to it. Collision shape. And in my collision shape, I'm going to add still a box a cube. So selecting that, uh, I've already moved this. I'm just going to quickly bring it close to this one and drag this out. So I want this to cover the uh, entire uh, wall. And this will actually make the player not to be able to pass through that wall. So 
I'm going to drag this up. You're going to use this red. Don't use any other side of it. So just use the uh, red things there to scale it on different axes. So drag this back. Make sure it's uh, okay. So we we'll have something like this. I think this will be okay for our work. Okay. So I'll save my work and um, select this. I'll call this wall. So I'm going to select this wall and um, okay I think I made a bit mistake here let me uh, go to my mesh and drag my mesh back here let's drag this back and drag this back so I actually moved it out of alignment so we'll have to take them all back to the center here we'll have this our wall so if you look at here you see what's happening here so i think i have to select this two both of them and bring them to the center here let's select that and see okay now it's actually in proportion right now so we'll have this i'm going to drag this down to this place let me check something on the floor oh our floor is a bit not so uh, Okay, um, there is one more button that I want you to know. If you want your mesh to be united so that when you scale this, it will affect the other one. You can select that and click on that button. So whenever you do, you select any of them and scale, it will scale all of it. So I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Click on that button. So if you look at that, it does uh, restore the object's children ability to be selected. So that's when you actually uh, select it. So if I just click on that, that means that all of it once i select it whatever i do to it will affect the children too that's the other ones below it this one below it so i'm going to select that and i'm going to do ctrl d so i have an another wall so i would like to put a very simple wall in front of him just scale it down a bit like this and use my rotation to rotate it this way okay so we'll have that so let's just quickly um, select this, Ctrl D, and uh, pull this one to this side. And um, I think I want to use both of them. And uh, Ctrl D, use this and drag it forward to this point. So I want to just have a very long. Um, thing here so at last i will want to have one more wall here let's select that wall ctrl d and i'm going to use my rotation and rotate that okay so i have something like this so quickly i'll just put that now we're actually not doing any level design i just want us to put our character and having a begin to go through uh, or pass different walls that will be blocking it so i'm just going to drag this to make sure it's actually down so i'm going to duplicate again and push this one backwards okay so i have something like this now so this is the scene that we have actually built so i'll go to my card controller and do my final testing here and uh, and just go see if i try to pass it's gonna block me if i try to fall out it's gonna block me so i have to actually evade this evade that and so i have this so okay so i have to start walking back again so uh you can use the design a very simple game so we'll be designing a very simple game with this so what well, this is the first thing we're going to look at so we have learned how to be able to use our character uh, our visual scripting to work with our character controller so that we can be able to actually control it so you have the different buttons the function the conditions and just basically have about four different nodes that we'll be using here and then the function that will be here okay so thanks for listening and um, do subscribe and i will also be posting more videos on this particular project so that we can design a very simple 3d game using visual scripting all right thank you for listening